Okay. All right, uh, I'm back now. Uh, the recording looks good. I'm a bit worried because, you know, I haven't done anything for a little while. And I have had it before where I've gotten part, you know, an hour into something and uh, found out I wasn't actually recording the, uh, the mic for, I don't know, or the resolution was all wrong and it, it looked kind of garbage. I think I had a section of, like, the, uh, the link to the past where, you know, it was horribly stretched and stuff, but uh, this looked good. Um, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, I'm gonna find her, I guess. Uh, oh, frog. I go back to the village now. Uh, anyways, alright, Minecraft. Uh, yeah. Uh, the crafting I thought was, uh, very tedious. Like, I think it should have had a thing where any storage containers that are within, like, I don't know, 100 blocks of you or whatever count as being in your inventory when you're crafting. Uh, because otherwise, it just becomes tedious where you're like, okay, I need, you know, some wood and some stone and this gem or whatever. Uh, so you go and, you know, you got, oh, okay, I keep my wood in this box and the stones in this one. You got to run all over your little hideout and, you know, pull all your, the right materials out and, and then put them all back when you're done. And it's just, I don't know, I, I don't know why they didn't think of that. Yeah, like there was a bunch of other little things with the crafting I I didn't like. Um, uh, you know, it did have a lot of that feeling too of clicking around in menus to get stronger, which I hate. Uh, like, okay, I gotta you know convert this many you know wood branches or whatever into wood slabs and then. Or, you know, wood planks, and then convert this many wood planks into wood slabs, and then, uh, you know, convert a whole bunch of rocks into rock bricks or whatever, and then, uh, you gotta keep going, and then you combine all these, and then eventually you get your thing that you actually wanted, and it's like, okay, why can't I just click, like, the thing that I want, and then it'll just go and combine all the stuff and make it for me? Well, why do I have to... Do all this clicking around that you know if it was more if the crafting was more i don't know like free form or something where you were actually making like creative decisions or whatever uh then it would be okay to do it manually but as it is you're just you're gonna go and you're gonna get all your wood and your bricks or blocks or whatever and you just throw them all in and you get your part so that you know it might as well just be automated But yeah, like the the mining and the crafting, I didn't like. So, uh, you know the uh, like the exploring was good. I love that, just going around, uh, you know, exploring, going in, you know, digging a hole straight down and seeing what was there. And, uh, you know, just taking a bunch of stuff, getting a uh, boat or whatever, and setting off and finding stuff. Uh, I just found all of the 
know, the, the mining and the crafting to be just, I don't know, horribly boring and a waste of time. And I did try and look, I know there is like, I don't know, maybe I should have been playing it on PC, but uh, there is like debug options or whatever where you can, uh, uh, you know, give yourself any item or whatever. And I had kind of tried like, okay, is there a way I can just give myself a bunch of like diamond pickaxes or whatever just to kind of get around this, but I found it to be, it was very cumbersome on the Switch anyways. Uh, it didn't seem to really work that great, and I, you know, in order to type all the commands in, I ended up having to, like, plug in a USB keyboard. Uh, and it was just, I don't know. Maybe sometime I should get it on, like, a uh, PC and see if there's a mod that just, uh, fixes all that stuff, but, uh... I don't know, as it was, it wasn't... It, it was very disappointing. Some reason I I don't know, I assumed they were more expensive. That's one for the other girl, but, uh, okay, uh... For some reason, I get the feeling I was supposed to go back here in order to, like, warp back or something, but, uh... enemies in here? Oh. Oh, if there's anything in here or not. I don't think this is where I'm supposed to go. to just have something hidden in here again after I've already beaten it. I like this background music here.
Mario RPG was much uh, more straightforward than this. Alright, it must be something at the castle. I've got to look around the castle again. It would be nice if you could avoid all these enemies, though. I don't like having to fight them. Uh, well. uh, so what's next? Uh, let's see, Minecraft was a first, so uh, seventh best would be uh, Shenzhen IO. Um, yeah, uh, the Zachronics games uh, that I've played have been really good. Um, have I played? Uh, I think just Infinifactory before this. Um, I, I think I should probably play more of them, but uh, yeah, Infinifactory was great. Um, uh, Shenzhen IO, I didn't end up beating it all the way. Um, I do like embedded uh, firmware development job, so. Uh, it was it was fun at first, but once it gets more difficult, it came, it started to feel just like work, and then it's like, okay, uh, this is just work that I'm not getting paid for at this point. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was very fun at the beginning, just kind of puzzling through it. Uh, there was a couple of things that I that they do it a bit different than how it's actually done. And that always ended up kind of throwing me off. Uh, uh, things like comments taking up uh, memory uh, was kind of annoying. And uh, remember, like, certain pins can only be used for uh, certain... Uh, like, like, you've got your communication pins and then, like, your I.O. pins, and those are different. Whereas usually you can use, like, the communication pins can be used for general I.O. Uh, there's uh, a couple other things. Um, I think like, the, there's, like, a wireless module for one of the things, and uh, it's got, like, a PX and RX pins, and you are supposed to connect them to the PX and RX pins of uh, another device, but... Uh, they have you connect them, I think it's the same way, so you connect the PX pin on one to the PX pin on the other, which always threw me off because that's not what you do. Usually like the, the transfer pin connects to the receive pin on the other device, and I don't know, that always, I'd get like halfway through designing and then be like, okay, why isn't this working? And then it's like, oh yeah, I, I connected the PX to the RX. Uh, I think that's what it was. It was something like that anyways, if that wasn't the case. Uh, oh. Okay, of course. They found her, and then we went and rescued the real queen. So she's still hanging out here, that's... I just gotta go up here and talk to her. That's, uh... I didn't need to run all over the continent there. Of course. Or, wait, she's not... I don't know, she, like, vanished or whatever. Oh, I guess that was the, the time thing, because... We weren't going to rescue her, so we weren't going to rescue her grandma or whatever, so she started to disappear. Oh, I should have hit wrong there, maybe. Oh well. Uh, oops. I don't think there's any kind of, like, relationship points in this or anything where, uh, I gotta say the right thing or they leave the party or anything. So, matter. Uh, so... Oh. 
I'll talk to these guys, and then, uh... I guess I head back to the canyon now. Uh, yeah, so Shenzhen Isle, yeah, it, it was really fun. Um, we're probably gonna play a couple more Zachronix games sometime. Uh, looks like they've got quite a few interesting ones. What's uh, uh, sixth worst? Um, uh, Senran Kagura Peach Ball. Yeah, so I I do like the Senran Kagura games. I've played quite a few of them. Um, I don't really care for pinball, but I thought, oh well, it's Senran Kagura. It'll be kind of interesting anyways. Um, it was a huge missed opportunity, though. There's like two tables, and that's it, which was just, I don't know, I can't believe that they thought that like that was enough like okay we're just gonna have two tables like you'd think i don't know once you get through making all the systems like the game engine the physics and all that it's like why would you then just make only two tables uh I, I don't know, I would think that at that point, like, okay, you know, you'd spend 90% of your time making, like, the engine and everything. You would want to have at least a couple different tables then, just for, you know, to make all that time worthwhile. But yeah, so it's it ends up being very repetitive, because you're just doing the same two tables over and over again. Uh, like, it, it was fun and everything. Uh, and it, it would have been good if there was a lot more, it's just, you just do the same two over and over again, it's like you, you know, and they had slightly different missions and stuff, but, uh, yeah, that was just, I don't know, it shouldn't have been like that, the, you know, it was kind of fun, you know, like smacking the ninja girls with the pinballs and all that, and, uh, you know, I love, like, their sense of humor and how it's always, you know, so cheesy and stuff, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was just so disappointing. Uh, yeah. Let's see next. Uh, so sixth best would be Total War Shogun 2. Uh, so yeah, last year I had played uh, Total War Warhammer 2 for like the first time and I absolutely loved it. I'm pretty sure I talked a ton about it uh, in the uh, Mario RPG series, but uh, yeah, Total War Shogun 2 was great. Uh,
just waiting for it to get kind of get back into the game before I start uh, mocking again. Right, so uh, Total War Shogun 2. Um, yeah, I had a ton of fun with it. I played through it several times. Uh, I forget mean, uh, what clans I did. Um, the Archery heavy, heavy Clan, and then I did, I think, like the Gunpowder Heavy one. Uh, and then I think I did a bit of, uh, I think, like the what Infantry Heavy one. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. It was a bit earlier in the year that I played it, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The Total War games are just super fun. Uh, I never get enough of them. Uh, I've actually been playing a ton of uh, Total War Warhammer 2 again this year, but uh, I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, yeah, I had gotten into Shogun 2 uh, because I had played, uh, I think, Neo to last year, and then uh, that got me into like uh, Sengoku stuff. So I had started like you know uh, reading about it, and listening to some podcasts about it and stuff. Uh, and then I saw Shogun Two, and I was like, oh yeah, this is perfect. Sengoku Total War. Uh, so yeah, I played a bunch of that. Um, there's some there were some things I actually like more about it than uh, Warhammer. Uh, like, I like that you don't need to have, uh, generals in all your armies. You can just have units of, or just armies of regular units. Uh, it made it so much easier for, like, uh, recruiting, because, uh... uh. Well, at least he gets a speedy trial. Usually you're waiting for months or years before you do. Same day is not common. Now I remember you can uh, you get asked a bunch of questions here about your actions at the fair. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to like really affect the outcome. I think you get thrown in jail either way. Uh, whether you tell the truth or... Uh, who started the whole mess? Um, I guess it depends what you mean, but... Uh... Yeah, I guess I did go up and talk to her first. I guess it's either you tell the truth that you did the bad things, or you lie, so you're screwed either way. Uh, yeah, I guess I took that chicken twice. Or whatever it was. Food.
Yeah, I wonder if there is any kind of, you know, you can do this the right way or something and not get in trouble or something. Maybe you can influence the number of people who stand on the side, but you still always end up losing something. Oh, I guess that's supposed to be hair on the top of those guys' head. I thought it's the same color as their skin. I thought maybe they just had like really deformed heads. But, uh... Well, if they don't have a consensus, isn't it just a hung jury and... Oh, he's not guilty. Okay. He's not guilty, but it doesn't matter, so... I'm guessing it'll be another uh, prison sequence that these RPGs love. I think they all have a uh, a prison sequence where you're stuck in a cell and you've got to just walk around for two minutes or whatever until you get busted or or you click around until you find the secret exit. So the Chancellor, uh, bad guy. One ether. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, what was I, uh, about the... Ah, uh, Shogun 2, right? The, uh, yeah, you can just make, like, your own kind of garrison unit. You can just hire, like, a bunch of spearmen or whatever. Uh, keep them at, like, whatever town you want. Uh, you know, which is, I like just being able to make your own kind of garrison. And, uh, you know, for hiring units, if there's some unit that takes four turns to hire. You don't have to have like your main army just sitting there doing nothing for four turns. You can just hire the unit and then when they're there, just march them across the map to join up with the main army, which is, I think that's a much better way. Like in Warhammer, I, I don't usually end up using a lot of the units because I don't want an army to sit there for four turns while I hire them. So usually I'll only use like the one or two turn units, and uh, you know if they're not strong enough, I okay you use two stacks of them. Like I just finished playing through uh, Bretonia, and I never ended up using uh, like Royal Pegasus or uh, Royal 
griffin riders or uh, I only used a handful of grail knights um, because they all you know they take three four five six turns to recruit so I don't want an army to just be sitting around for that long uh, not to mention you know naturally the places that get built up quick enough to recruit them are going to be the ones you know further towards the center of your read your like uh, I don't know domain or whatever oh, I see there's a guy there with his head in the guillotine that's kind of dark and funny um you know so you don't I don't want to march my you know my lord's army back to like the capital and then wait for six turns to recruit all these guys and then march all the way back to like the front lines so I was like, okay, well, you know, this town out, out near the front lines can, it, it can recruit questing knights or whatever. So, you know, in two turns, so that's good enough. So I'll just use piles of them. Uh, but yeah, in Shogun, I actually ended up using a lot of the, you know, four turn recruit units because I could just recruit them, march them across, and then they meet up eventually. Uh, which, you know, it was, I don't know, it was much nicer that way. Uh, even if there is much less unit variety because, you know, every army is using samurai, there's, you don't have a whole variety of, like, knights and skaven and vampires and whatever. But yeah, it was, I don't know, it was a ton of fun. I played, I don't know, I probably put, I don't know, 200 hours into it. Can I save this guy? Or... Yeah. And then we hit the wrong button and it's caffeinated. that way, so I think I'm supposed to go the other way. Megami Tensei 4. Right, so uh, yeah, over the past year, I know there's been a lot of the uh, commercials for the Shin Megami Tensei 5. Uh, you, you know, they were doing like the daily demon things. And uh, I love that kind of, uh, you know, mythological monster stuff. Uh, so, you know, I was watching, like, every one of them, and I thought, okay, like, this is awesome, I want to play this game, uh... Wait here, or what? Uh, so yeah, I... Uh, and it just so happened I had just, uh, finished modding my 3DS, which I... I don't remember if I talked about it or not. Uh, I don't know, I might have talked about it in the Link to the Past video, or maybe it was during the randomizer that I didn't end up finishing, but uh, yeah, it's actually, I don't know, surprisingly easy. Uh, I don't know, just to go over it, like, you know, to mod the 3DS, you just 
there's a site you go to and it has complete step-by-step -step things. You put in like your, your type of 3DS, your firmware version or whatever, and it's, you know, you click OK and then it takes you to a page It's OK, you know, download this file, put it on your SD card, put it in your 3DS, run it, whatever. And, uh, you know, so you run the file, then you go and, uh... I don't get it. Uh, okay, I gotta get in there from the outside. Yeah, so it says, okay, you know, you put this file on, run it, and it tells you exactly where to put it and exactly what to do. And then you say, okay, go to the next step. And it's like, okay, now take this file from your SD card and, you know, put it on your PC. Now run this program on it and it'll have a link to the program and, you know, not a dead link or anything. You just install it, uh, you know, run the thing. And it's okay, this will generate these files, put them here on your card. And, you know, everything is laid out exactly step by step. You don't, there's no, you know, no work involved on your part. You just follow exactly what it says. I, oh, wait. Yeah, you just follow everything exactly and it just works. And, uh, I don't, like, I remember modding my Wii way back and it was just a nightmare. It, it was... Uh, you know, you go to some random shady forum and it would be, you know, somebody would say, oh yeah, to mod the Wii, well first you gotta get like the NAND ripped or whatever, and uh, you know, come back once you've done that, so you have to go and Google like how to rip the NAND or whatever, and then, uh, you know, you'd find, you know, conflicting reports on how to do that, and there'd be dead, you know, people say, oh, use this program, and you'd follow the link, and it'd be you know, some, uh, you know, you know, dead link on, like, Mega or Mediafire or whatever, it, the file wouldn't be there, so you, uh, you know, you'd go to some other forum to try and find it, and you'd find some similar program that, you know, maybe does it, but is a little bit different, you have to kind of figure out, okay, is that going to work, and, you know, once you get that done, somebody say, okay, now install, like, this menu loader thing or whatever and, uh, again you'd get like a different version where they'd updated the GUI and so now none of the none of the guides work anymore because they've renamed everything uh, and just you know every step of the way involved like you know researching a whole ton of stuff and figuring out exactly what you were doing and, uh, and in the end you'd get some like horrible, like, uh, you know, spaghetti mess of files that somehow kind of works to do the modding or whatever. And, you know, I ended up having to have, like, a, a set of instructions next to the Wii, like, okay, this is how you play GameCube games. Uh, you know, you gotta go into this thing, but then sometimes that doesn't work, so you do this, and it was just, it was not user-friendly at all. Uh, you know, my sister basically stopped playing the Wii because it was like, okay, she couldn't even figure out how to run a game. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it was a nightmare. But the 3DS, it was super smooth. Everything, you don't have to think or anything. It's just, you go through and, uh... I guess. Yeah, I just... It does take quite a while, though, because uh, it's a lot of... Uh, take the SD card out of your 3DS, run some programs on it, wait for them to finish, copy files on, put it in the 3DS, 
run the file, you know, reboot the 3DS, uh, run the files on it, wait for them to run. Copy those onto the PC and so on, and it's just, you know, it's that over and over again for... You know, I think it ended up, it took me like an hour or two to do, but... Uh, in the end, it worked, and it seems super reliable. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no problem running games. Uh, you know, coming back to it weeks or months later, it, there, I don't have to like look up a guide on how to use it again. It's just okay. I, I put the games in here and I run them. Uh, so yeah, I I had just done that, and I'd seen the Persona Five uh, or the Megami Tensei Five stuff. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna play Tensei 4. So I uh, I played through it part way anyways. I got like halfway through and uh, yeah, basically everything I said about Disgaea was applicable here. It felt like it was just a lot of uh, wasted time just grinding and stuff. Uh, the, the battles did not seem strategical at all. They were strategic. They were, uh, you know, every monster has basically the same small pool of skills. Uh, I think there's like, what, 20 attacks in the whole game or something? And all of the hundreds of monsters just have some variety of them. Uh, and because it's so heavily based on, like, uh, fusing monsters or whatever, their stats get overly affected by that. Their stats and their abilities, so they really lose their identity. Like, I was looking forward to being like, okay, here's, like, my team of, like, you know, this monster, and, you know, this other monster, and, you know, oh, this one looks cool, maybe it'd be good, but, uh... Uh, but yeah, it, every monster ends up feeling kind of the same, and you go through them so quickly. It's like every 20 minutes, you're just using all your monsters and getting a whole new set, so... They all just become kind of like a general blur of, you know, not really, I don't know, distinct characters. Uh, which, I had the same problem with Dragon Quest monsters. You, you don't really feel like they're at all different from each other. Like, I think that's one thing Pokemon does pretty well, is playing through the game again with a different set of Pokemon, like, it feels different. And each Pokemon has, like, its own identity. also, it was very grindy. Um, uh, the beginning of that game is absolutely horrible. It's it's the worst beginning of any game I've ever played in terms of like grinding and difficulty. Um, at the beginning of the game, like nine times out of ten, you're just gonna wipe wipe when you get into a random encounter. They'll just kill you all, and you'll, your party will get wiped out, and you'll start from the or the checkpoint or whatever. And you've just got to hope that you can recruit a monster before you get wiped out. And you do that over and over until you finally got a full team and you know, you've leveled them up a bit. But it's... Uh, I don't know, it, it was just absolutely horrible. I ended up looking up and I was like, okay, something's wrong. Like, uh... Like, am I... am I playing it wrong? Is, like, the game broken? Is this some, like, anti-piracy thing that's triggering or something? Like, uh, the game should not be this difficult to start, but then I looked up and everyone was just like, yeah, it just kind of sucks at the beginning. You just gotta deal with it. Uh, but then the game just gets... It 
just gets easier and easier from them. And, uh... And then it had the problem again where I just I ended up grinding a bunch. Uh, and they make it way too easy to grind too. Like there's a there's a mission you can do that gives you um, like you run through the mission, you spend like five minutes running through it over and over or whatever, and uh, it gives you far more experience than you would get in like five hours of playing normally. It's just completely broken. And there's another mission for uh, money and uh, I forget what the other thing, like uh, ability points or whatever. So you can spend like, if you spend an hour grinding, you'll just max everyone out. And I don't know, it was, it was a horrible idea to put that in. Uh, so yeah, it and the combat it it was standard JRPG combat. It was very simple. You know, you you select a uh, fight in normal battle, or you select fight, or you select you know the correct elemental ability. Uh, all the enemies are either like basically immune to an element, or they're super weak and it just destroys them. And uh, you know, to make it worse, if they're like immune to it or strong to it, that gives them like extra attacks. Like, if you accidentally use the wrong one on them, then they just destroy you with their counterattacks. But if you use the right one on them, like the super effective one, it gives you extra turns. So, what happens is, you know, you meet an enemy for the first time, it doesn't show what they're immune to, uh, so you try something out, uh, you know, until you, you know, you find the right one, and then after that, every time you fight them, it just shows you what they're weak to, and then you just use that, and it just seems, I don't know, there's no strategy. You get into the fight, it says use fire, so you use fire and one-shot all the enemies, and that's it. Uh... The recruiting enemies also is not, like, there's no strategy that I can see, like, uh, like, it's got, it's got a good sense of humor, at least, like, you say, like, oh, you know, you, you try and bribe them or whatever, and, uh, or you, uh, yeah, you try and bribe them or you threaten them or whatever, but, uh, there doesn't seem to be any, like, rhyme or reason, like, some enemies, uh, You know, some, one time you'll bribe them and it'll work, and another time you'll bribe them and then they'll just kill you, or whatever. And it just seems to be totally random as far as what happens. Yeah, after playing that, I kind of lost all interest in uh, playing Five.
Yeah, where are we? I don't... For this. Okay. Alright, I had thought I was... It was going somewhere else. Uh... Saber. Okay, I sold the Iron Blade. I don't know if I was supposed to do that, uh, or if that was the right thing. Um, maybe that was Frog's weapon. Yes. I'll go through there another day. I'm taking this stop for now. Uh, I am hopefully. Well, I had originally. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I had originally planned to try and do this for like around New Year's, but uh, it's getting pretty close, so it's probably going to come out a little bit after New Year's, anyways, but hopefully not too long. Uh, See, I did two hours. Uh, apparently the game takes about 20 to beat, so... Uh, hoping I can do maybe three or four hours a day. Three hours, many, anyways. Uh, hopefully beat this in like a week or so. Uh, okay, uh, I guess that's it for now then. Right? 